be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This morning we've the story of Abram and Sarai being blessed and sent away. And it sounds like something that, that we'd all want to sign up for, right? Would you all want this blessing? I got at least one person that knows the right answer back here. The, the correct answer to that is no, you really wouldn't want this blessing. Because it sounds really good, right? God is sending Abram away to a land that he doesn't know. When he and Sarah are, Sarai, sorry, are 70, he's 75. Sarai is about 10 years younger than him, so she's about 65. And God tells him to go from your country, from your kindred, and your father's house. Now, how many of you have ever moved away from your family? It's, it's commonplace now, right? You know a lot of people that this is not where they're from, right? This is not where they grew up. This is not where they live. Their, their parents or their grandparents live someplace else. And it's commonplace for us. But in Israel's time, in Abram's time, this was not the way it happened. When you lived in your father's house, you lived with your father and your mother and who else? Grandparents, your father's mother and father also lived with you. And possibly your wife's mother and father. It was a three-generation household. And it was a very close-knit, kinship-based society. Right? This was a society that based all of their lives on who they belonged with and who they belonged to. It was about the land that you belonged to. It was about the, the tribe that you belonged to. It was about the clan that you belonged to and about the family that you belonged to. And right here in this first sentence of our reading, God tells Abraham to give up everything that is a security to you and go someplace else. Give up your country, give up your kindred, give up your father's house, and give up your land, because I'm going to show you a different land that I'm going to give to you. And my question for all of us this morning is, what did Abram do to deserve this? What did he do? What has Abram done? Now, remember now, he's not even, who is Abram going to be? Abraham. And I'm struggling really hard this morning not to say Abraham. And you've heard me say a couple times Sarah, because Sarah is now Sarai, right? They have not yet been renamed by God. They are Abram and Sarai. And what have they done to get God's blessing? I heard the right answer, but we're going to skip over that for a moment. What have you done to deserve God's blessing? This is not a trick question. This is not a trick question. Nothing. What can you do to earn God's blessing? Nothing. So why did Abram, out of all the people of the world, get selected? Because all we know about Abram is what we hear just before what we get here in chapter 12, at the end of chapter 11. He's named in the lineage of Noah. Noah has three sons, right? Noah, the guy with the boat. We talked about him last week. You know, he built a boat, and he put all the animals on it, and he sent the, the animals out finally at the end after they'd been on that boat a really, really, really long time. And then his sons come off the boat and they list out the lineage, the gene genealogy, the generations of Noah. And Shem, the oldest son of Noah, has sons. And Tahor is his last son. And Tahor is the father of Abram. And we hear at the end of chapter 11 how Abram and Sarai are married. And this is the lineage of Shem. The only thing we know about Abram and Sarai is that Sarai is barren. Which steps it up even another notch, right? Because God has now come to Abram and Sarai and said, I want you to leave your country, your kindred, your father's house, and the land that you've always known, and I'm going to send you to a new land. And oh, by the way, the way it looks right now, you're not going to have any children to take care of you when you go there. So you're giving up every last bit of security that you know. And again, I ask, why is Abram the one that gets this? 
And God doesn't bless him just once. He blesses him how many times in our reading this morning? There's actually a threefold promise given to Abraham. Three things God promises to give him. Right? In verse 2 he says, Give up everything that you've known and I'm going to send you to the land that I'm going to give to you. Right? And I'm going to give you many descendants. And I'm going to bless you. God tells Abram that he's going to give him land, he's going to give him descendants, and that he's going to bless him. But again, why Abram? You see, so many of us go through life thinking that we're, we're broken, or we're in some way scarred, or we're in some way messed up that we're not good enough to be used by God, or we think we're too young, right? What can, what can Micah do? You haven't met Micah yet, but you're going to see him here in a little bit. He's going to be right here. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a few minutes. But what can he do? I was talking about the Packer cleanup before service with Doug and about how, how it's not really cleaning. It's just pulling garbage bags. And it's easy because Doug said, and I quote, even a 74-year-old can do it. <laughs> and Abram was how old? 75. 75. Not quite there yet, Doug. you got a little ways to go. <laughs> we think that we're messed up in some ways, that, that we're cracked or flawed, right? Society tells us if we're not perfect, then we're not right. If we're not exactly the way society wants us to be, then we're wrong. If we don't fit in the mold and we don't do exactly what people think that we should do, then we're, we're, we're an outsider or we, we need to be ostracized or we're not, we're not doing things right. So what did Abram do? That God saw him and took favor upon him. You could say, well, he almost sacrificed his son. And I'd say, well, wait a minute. That's not Abram. That's Abraham. And that's a long time from now. That's like chapter 22 of Genesis. This is chapter 12. So we're not there yet. That's after this. It's after God saw Abram. That's what Abram was. See, and that's the thing that we all need to hear this morning. Is no matter what the world says about you, if you're cracked or lusher or in some way different or weird or insert word of not fitting in here. Right? Because we all hear those things from time to time. We all feel those ways from time to time that we're not good enough be doing this. We're not good enough to be used by God. How many of you have ever heard the story about the woman who had two pots? She walked every day from, from her village two miles to the well and then back with these jugs. They were big jugs. She walked with one on one shoulder and one on the other. And she'd walk every day and she'd walk to get her water and she'd fill up her jugs with water. And then she'd walk back. And when she got back, she had these two big jugs, but only one of them had water in it because one of them had a big crack in it. And the people would tell her, why do you walk with that jug with that crack in it? She'd say, have you not walked down this path? And you walk down the path and the one side is barren and there's nothing growing on it at all. It's just dirt and weeds and, and burnt up grass. And the other side, where the because she always carried the jugs on the same side, right? The, the cracked one was always on her left arm. So the right side of the road was filled with flowers and beautiful things growing because it had been nourished in water for the times, every time she walked back and forth because that cracked pot would leak water out. Well, you know what? Each and every one of us is a cracked pot. Each and every one of us is scarred in some way. Each and every one of us is not right in some way. Each and every one of us has something wrong with us. But you know what else is also true? Even though you're a cracked pot, in order for light to get in or water to get out, there has to be a opening. No. Right? In order for light to get in, there has to be an opening. In order for water to get out, there has to be an opening. Because God chose Abram, not because of what he did, but because of who he was. Not that he was any better than anybody else on earth, but the fact that he was knit together by God. And known by God, even before his mother gave birth to him. 
just as Micah was knit together by God and known by God before he came to be with us here today. Each and every one of us was made perfectly by God to be here to do the things that God has called us to do. And if we can follow after God, then he's going to do great and wonderful things through us. Bless you. He's going to do great and wonderful things in our lives and through our lives. Because, and i got to, I got to end my sermon this morning with a quote from the great theologian John Bon Jovi. <laughs> from the song, Welcome to Wherever You Are. See, God doesn't make any mistakes. So there's nothing in our lives that's wrong that can't be corrected by God if we only follow after Him. And in the song, Welcome to Wherever You Are, John says, When you want to give up and when your heart's about to break, remember that you're perfect. Because God makes no mistakes.